There are two kinds of reasoning often referred to in philosophy, what is called a priori and a posteriori reasoning. The difference between the two really is a matter of whether previous experience is included in the process or not. Take a priori reasoning first. Here's an example. The meaning of the word square is a figure with four equal length sides. I could not understand the sentence the square on the board is red without knowing what the word square means. But notice that I would not be required to have had seen any squares before to know what the word square means. Therefore, to understand the sentence, the square on the board is red, I wouldn't need to have seen any squares. But I would have to have seen some red objects in order to know what it means for the square to be red. But take another sentence. The square has four sides. All I have to know here is what the words mean to know whether the sentence is true. The sentence is true. I don't need to have seen any squares to know whether the sentence is true. I know what the word square means. I know what has means. I know what for means. I know what sides means. Moreover, having four sides is included in the meaning of the word square. Therefore, if someone were to say, the square on the board has four sides, I wouldn't have to look at the board to know that the square on the board has four sides, since it's just part of the meaning of square that any of them will have four sides. This is a priori reasoning. If I understand what the words mean, and let's assume that coming to know the meaning of a word is, in principle, possible without having to have someone tell us or by making observations in the world, then the sentence, the square has four sides, can be understood and evaluated as true or false without having to look at the square, or any square for that matter. A priori statements can be false as well. Do I need to see any squares to know that the sentence, the square has five sides, is false? No. If I understand the meaning of the word square, I know that it's impossible that any square have five sides. It just wouldn't be a square if it did have five sides. On the other side, a posteriori reasoning does rely on having information learned from experience. We can't reason from self-evident principles or definitions alone. So the following statement is a posteriori. The population of Seattle is 582,174 people. There is no way to know that this statement is true or false without having to make some observations of the world. We can't reason this sentence out without having some empirical content. At this point, we've seen Plato rely very heavily on a priori reasoning. Aristotle will bring in some a posteriori reasoning as well. Anselm, Aquinas, Descartes, and Kant will rely heavily on a priori reasoning, while Hume and Mill will bring in a lot of a posteriori reasoning. We will be using this distinction a lot in the rest of the course, so it's important that you grasp this distinction now.